So I've seen a few posts on the internet where people are basically saying that the Labour Party, aka the new government in power, is now allowing care workers to bring dependents. And I've even seen people jubilating in WhatsApp groups and all of that, praising this new Prime Minister and all of that. Guys, is it really true? Here are the details. <laughs> So hi guys, welcome once again to my channel. My name is Anel Griselda. First of all, let me issue a disclaimer. I am not an immigration advisor. I am not an immigration solicitor. Honestly, I'm just a migrant from West Africa somewhere currently working in the UK. This is purely based on what I've read on the internet, okay? Do not let this replace professional immigration advice at all, okay? So first of all, to address this issue, is it true that the new Labour Party in power, aka Keir Starmer's party or government, they said that they are going to allow care workers and senior carers and domiciliary care workers to bring their dependents to the UK aka to bring their partners and to bring their children to the UK because we all know that this was put on hold just a couple of months ago by Richard Sunak or by the previous government. People are already spreading that this new government or this new party in power is going to let or has allowed or has agreed to let dependents of carers and senior carers come to the UK. How true is that? First of all, the recent publication about this that I saw on the internet is the NHS employers. So when you go on the NHS employers website, they've updated the article on skilled worker. This was updated on 6th of August, 2024. This is NHS. So it's a very trusted website. So let's look at what they have said about the skilled worker. And like I said, they posted this or they, they updated this article just on the 6th of August, 2024, as you can see on your screen, right? I'm not going to read everything, but when it comes to key points for the skilled worker route, let me go to the part that is important to this video. The health and care visa is now restricted to stop overseas care workers and senior care workers, then the occupation code is 6135 and 6136 from bringing dependents to the UK. All other health and care visa holders will continue to be exempt from the higher salary threshold, blah, blah, blah. So this is still validating the, what we know already that carers are not allowed to bring dependents to the UK, right? Now let's go to another source, okay? Now let's go to the gov.uk website. So if we go to the gov.uk website, if we search for the part about care workers or senior care workers, the part about dependents, it also says, your partner and children cannot apply to join you or stay in the UK as your dependent unless you were employed as a care worker or senior care worker in the UK and on a health and care worker visa before 11th March 2024 and one of the following is true either you are currently still on a health and care worker visa or you're extending your health and care worker visa with your current employer or you are changing to a new job within the same occupation code while on a health and care worker visa so the gov.uk as at today that I'm filming this video today is I think the 8th of August as at today that I'm filming this video is saying that you cannot bring your dependents if you're on a health and care worker visa and you came as a carer or a senior care worker unless you came before 11th of March 2024 then you can bring your dependents if you came after that date you cannot bring your dependents okay? and then you can still bring your dependents if you came before this date and you are still on a health and care worker visa or you are switching employers or you are extending your visa okay so if you only came before 11th of March, 2024, then you can bring, other than that, you cannot bring your dependents to the UK. So somebody might say that maybe the gov.uk website, they are slow to update. So let's look at a recent statement by the new Home Secretary as well, Yvette Cooper, what she also said regarding this topic. Okay. The Home Secretary, that is Yvette Cooper, said on the 30th of July, 2024, that's just a couple of days ago, that their government is not going to reverse any of the policies the migration policies that the previous government made they're not going to reverse it with the exception of one that is on hold which i would go into details very soon they're not going to reverse it they are still sticking to it if you watch my videos as well you realize that i did a video where i explained the policies that this new labor party has with regards to migration and i made mention that the fact that they were always arguing with the previous government in parliament does not mean that they are for migration they are also bent on you know reducing that migration both legal and illegal migration they hope that the UK will not rely so much on international recruitment and that their own people will be trained to take up and get the required skills to take up jobs in the UK and that they will not have to rely on foreign personnel. I explained
saying this already right and then this is just an emphasis okay so they are also saying that migration figures should come down yes they said it should come down because the figures are just too high they are also saying that changes that were made that the five points plan that the conservative party had in place they are saying that they are not going to reverse it the labor government says they are not going to reverse it they say that they support these changes and they are going to keep them in place but i said there's one of them that they are putting on hold i'll come to that later so this means that the salary threshold for skilled worker visas will remain at 38,700 pounds per year however the home secretary said that she's going to commission the migration advisory committee that is the mark to review the current 29,000 pounds per annum requirement for family or spouse visas there'll be no further changes to the level of the minimum income requirement until the mark review is complete so if you remember very well as part of the five point plan to reduce net migration by the conservative government when they were in power they were increasing the salary threshold the amount of money that you should be earning per year to be able to um, apply for a, a spouse visa or a dependent visa for your children to come and join you on a family visa the amount was increased right and then they were going to further increase it at certain points in time right as we all know the consecutive government increased the minimum income requirement from 18,600 a year to 29,000 in april 2024 and they also plan to increase it again to 34,500 later this year and then they, would, they plan to increase it from the 34,500 to 38,700 in 2025 so this one is what has been put on hold so the further increments that was supposed to go to by the end of this year and then later next year that is what they have put on hold until the migration advisory committee is done with their investigations and their research so the home secretary also announced that she's commissioning the math that's another important point to review the reliance on key sectors of the uk economy on migrant workers specifically the it and engineering sectors so for those of you who are not aware there are so many people from india from ghana from so many other different countries that have come to work in the uk in it sectors and engineering sectors these people applied for jobs online just like anybody else in engineering companies and it firms and they qualified to get visa sponsorship to come in with their family to come and work here on a skilled worker visa so the new home secretary yvette cooper is saying that they are going to also ask the map to investigate and research on why the uk's economy or the uk companies are too reliant on foreign personnel when it comes to it and engineering like why are they too reliant on it so they're also going to research on that as well it and engineering have consistently relied on significant levels of international recruitment and have been included on the shortage occupation list for over a decade they're going to investigate why that is so because remember that they do not want to rely on too much foreign personnel or foreign international recruitment anymore so let me read the exact statement that she said she says migration has always been an important part of the history of our nation for generations people have traveled here from all over the world to contribute to our economy study in our universities work in our public service and be part of our community and british citizens continue to travel across the world to make their homes abroad this government recognizes so this government she means her government which is the labor government recognizes and values the contribution that legal migration makes to our country so she's trying to say that she recognizes the values that people coming to work in as doctors as nurses as carers as engineers it accountants she recognizes and she values the contribution that these legal migrants make to their country and we believe the immigration system needs to be properly controlled and managed she said that under the previous government net migration trebled in five years heavily driven by a big increase in overseas recruitment this government is clear that net migration must come down whilst we will always benefit from international skills and talent including to keep us globally competitive immigration must not be used as an alternative to tackling skill shortages and labor market failures here in the uk for that reason we are setting out a new approach so she's saying that it is true they value us blah 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 all the skills and all the expertise that we bring on board however they have realized that in the, in the last five years net migration levels have, has been an itch record high if you remember in one of my videos i said that the number of people that remained in the uk in a one-year period the last statistics that came out it was over 700 000, which is a lot especially because the country is very small and we have to understand that most of these people came through legal migration you know processes they did not go on the boats on the english channels and then come here no they came through they applied for skilled worker visas it was approved they got sponsorship they came here legally and then some of them came with five kids you know a husband or a wife blah 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 so the figures are just too much and they are saying that they don't want to heavily rely on overseas recruitment and they don't want to use 
use international recruitment as an alternative of tackling their own shortage in their country, their own skill shortage and their labor market failures. Okay. So they don't want their only option to tackle their occupation shortage or their labor market failure to be international recruitment. So that is why they are using a new approach to tackle this. So it says the Office of National Statistics estimate that net migration in the year to December 2023 was 685,000 compared to 184,000 in the year to December 2019 before the pandemic. Non-EU long-term immigration for work-related reasons increased from 277,000 in the year to December 2022 to 423,000 in the year to December 2023, replacing study as the main reason for long-term migration. The number of work visas issued, including dependents, in the 12 months to 31st March was 605,264, was over three times that of 2019 prior to the pandemic and 24% higher than in the 12 months to 31st of March 2023, which was only 486,614. So this says this reflects a failure over many years to tackle skill shortage and other problems in the UK labor market, meaning too many sectors have remained reliant on international recruitment instead of being able to source the skills they need here in the UK. So this is why we are setting out a different approach. One that links migration policy and visa controls to skills and labor market policies so that immigration is not used as an alternative to training or tackling workforce problems here at home. This approach will be important to enabling delivery of the government's broader agenda. So rather than bringing in more people, they want to train their own people, focus on that. As part of this, the MAC will work with Skills England, Industrial Strategy Council, the Labor Markets Advisory Board as part of a new framework to support a coherent approach to skills, migration, and labor market policy. So she went on and on and on and on to state what they have done so far. She mentioned the fact that some students can no longer bring dependents. She mentioned the fact that the care workers and senior care workers are not allowed to bring dependents with them. And she emphasized that they are going to keep all of these rules. She says, this government supports these changes and will continue to implement them in her own words. This is a person in charge of immigration for the new government in power. And she emphasized this in this speech and I'll leave a link so you can read the entire speech for yourself and then she emphasized this in the speech saying that this and I quote this government supports these changes and will continue to implement them so she means that every single thing the students not being able to bring dependents their salary thresholds which have been increased care workers and senior care workers not able to bring dependents after 11th of March 2024 all of that they support them and they're going to implement them and keep them in place so I don't know where you are hearing that now dependents can, can bring I haven't heard that if there's any Anything else which comes up later, I would come and do a video about it. So remember to keep your notification on. Okay? But if you want to read the entire speech, I'll leave a link here in the description so that you can read it for yourself. As well, let me mention that when it comes to the minimum income requirements for people that are on family visas and want to invite their partners over and their children over, although the amount was supposed to increase further this year by um, in a few months' time, and then again in 2025, that one she's put it on hold for now. So that's the only major thing that she has done. Or that's the only major thing that this new party has done. Other than that, everything we are still continuing from the old rules with regards to all these skilled worker visa stuff. I hope this made sense. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, please um, comment below. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.